So we're now going to work on our lifestyle. Now we know that our well-being is underpinned by our lifestyle. And by lifestyle, we mean the things that we do habitually every day. So we mean the, uh, our habitual patterns, things that we do physically, the things that we do mentally, the things that we do socially, the things that we do every day. Our lifestyle underpins our well-being. If we can get our lifestyle right, we know that it makes a massive difference to our well-being. So what I need you to do is to get yourself a sheet, a blank sheet of paper, blank sheet of A4 paper and a pen. So I'm going to give you just a moment. Get yourself that blank sheet of paper and that pen. Now, we're going to start off with a bit of an artistic challenge. And um, that's always a good thing, I think. Doing a little bit of artistic work is great for your well-being. So what I need you to do is to draw a circle. Now, I've actually got one printed. The one on the website, um, after this session, this wheel is going to be available to you. So I'm going to hold up what I want you to draw here. Now, it's a wheel. Hopefully, you can see that well. So it's going to be a test for you because you've got to draw. It doesn't have to be freehand. You could get something to draw around, but you're going to have to draw a wheel. It's going to be a real test for your artistic skill, this. And I want you to divide it into six segments. Six segments. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six segments. Okay, I do, I've done this lifestyle world with loads and loads of people and it's a very, 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 very powerful exercise. It's something that I do for me every month. So I repeat this exercise every month. So draw yourself a wheel and divide it into six segments. As I say, after this session, you'll have this template on, um, on the website. So you won't have to draw your own wheel, it's drawn for you. Okay, so hopefully you've done that now. Hopefully you've got yourself a nice round wheel with six relatively even segments. See, I'm not there to test to see whether your artistic skills up to it. So I'm just gonna have to trust that you've got these, that you've got these segments even. Okay, and I want you to label each of these segments. So segment A here. So segment A for me, segment A is that one there. Segment A, I want you to label, just, uh, just put a label around the outside is physical activity. So that's the physical activity part of your lifestyle. So just write physical activity around the outside. Segment B is the mental activity. So just write mental activity around the outside. These are all the different elements of your lifestyle. Segment C is rest. We always miss that out. Often we miss that out. Um, particularly, <laughs> Again, we were talking last week about the, some of the challenges that you have in your sector. I know how passionate you are about projects. I know how intensely you work on projects. We must remember that rest is a vital part of our lifestyle. As is segment D. So my segment D is here. So segment D is social activity. Social activity. Keep going around, segment E personal development activity. And then finally, segment F is personal relationships. So you've got six segments there. You've got physical activity, you've got mental activity, you've got rest, you've got, you've got personal, sorry, you've got social activity, you've got personal development activity, and you've got relationships. Okay, these are all the different elements of your lifestyle. Now, if your lifestyle looks like this, if your lifestyle is a big round wheel, then that is ideal. Your lifestyle acts a little bit like the vehicle which is gonna take you on your journey towards that vision of well-being. Your lifestyle acts a little bit like that, like, that, um, like a wheel that takes you on your journey through to achieve the things you want to achieve in your life. If your wheel is big and round, that journey is elegant and smooth. If that wheel is small or bumpy or crooked, then you've, you'll have some challenges. A big round lifestyle wheel represents, a, represents fantastic well-being. If you've got a big round lifestyle wheel, it's a great metaphor because it means the journey towards achieving what you want to achieve is going to be smooth and elegant. So let's see what your lifestyle wheel is currently 
like. Now, the trick with this is not to worry about it. The trick with this is to actually just reflect quickly. So I'm going to go through this quite quickly with a smile on your face. The difference, there's a big difference. Personal reflection is very positive. Personal reflection has to be done quickly. When you reflect on things, it has to be done quickly with a smile on your face. And I'm just going to give you a technique now for personal reflection, which you can take into other parts of your life. Personal analysis, where you're actually oh, really crunching up and thinking, well, I should have done better, I should have done better. We haven't hit these performance targets. This is not working so well. That is, all that does is it generates stress, generates cortisol, which generates anxiety. So this is quick reflection done in a very, very positive and lighthearted way. So segment A, which is your physical activity segment. So I want you now to rate yourself very quickly and instinctively on a scale of one to 10. And this relates to what's currently happening in terms of your lifestyle. What we do know is that during lockdown, people's lifestyle have become unbalanced for obvious reasons. People spending too much time at home, people spending not enough time exercising, people spending not enough time outside, et cetera, et cetera. People not socializing as much. So what we want to do is just to see what your lifestyle is looking at. So segment A, rate yourself on a scale of one to 10. To score yourself a 10 for segment A, you will be doing at least 30 minutes of at least moderate intensity physical activity five times a week. So that's at least 30 minutes of at least moderate intensity physical activity five times a week, including activity which makes you a little bit out of breath, works your muscles and improves your balance and coordination. And, and here's an interesting one, to score yourself a 10, you will be avoiding sitting for more than one hour at a time. So this is the guidance. So to score yourself a 10, it's 30 minutes of at least moderate intensity physical activity at least five times a week, including some work to improve muscles and balance and coordination, and that you avoid sitting for more than an hour at a time. So if you do that habitually, score yourself a 10. If you don't do that at all, then your score is a one. Now then, what I want you to do is this, so I want you to mark across the segment here to show what your score is. So let me just say for me, so I exercise every day, so I'm easily hitting, I'm easily a 10 in terms of, in terms of exercising. I, I do running, I do walking, I do yoga, I do, uh, uh, not doing weights, but I do sort of floor exercises to improve strength and I do balance exercises. At the same time, I regularly sit down for longer, regularly sit down for longer. <laughs> Yeah, there's a really interesting question there set up from Vanessa. What about if you do absolutely nothing during the week, uh, but then overdo it, make an it during the weekend? Uh, sadly, I'm afraid you're just going to have to maybe mark yourself down a little bit, Vanessa, for that, um, because this is about habitual exercise during the week. So for me, I would I regularly sit down for longer than an hour because I'm regularly doing sessions and I get absorbed into work in which now I'm not so now I'm moving around, but I'm just going to score myself an eight. So an eight out of 10 is going to be around there. So you see where I've marked it? That's around an eight out of 10 there. So if it was a 10, it would be here. If it was a naught, it would be here. So it's an eight out of 10, so it's about there. If it was a five, it would be about there. So just mark off on the segment where you think that is. So for me, it's there. <laughs> yeah, do you know, so many people say about Christmas, I'm not really a Christmas fan, I have to say. I'm not really a Christmas person. And one of the things about Christmas, it does get people out of some habits, which sometimes are pretty good. Okay, so we're now going to move on to the next section. I'm going to put my wheel down. Okay, the next section is mental activity. So for a score of 10, then you will be regularly and frequently engaging in creative, abstract and analytical thinking, um, synthesizing views, that means making links between views, regularly and frequently remembering good times, um, habitually being present as opposed to thinking about the past as we were just, as we were doing the sphere of influence exercise, to score over 10, you need to be habitually present as opposed to focusing on the past or thinking too much about the future, being present and score yourself a 10, you need to be going easy on yourself. You need to be not being too hard on yourself. 
So for a score of 10, regular and frequent creative abstract and analytical thinking, remembering um, good times, habitually being present in what you're doing and going easy on yourself. So if you do all of those things, score yourself a 10. So for me, this section, I'm going to score myself a seven there. Um, so I've scored an eight for the first section, a seven for the second section. Um, and I regularly get involved in creative and analytical work. The challenge that I have that puts me down a little bit at the moment is, you know, I get really, really hard on myself, I'm afraid, mentally really hard on myself. Um, and uh, I'm sort of uh, very, very critical of myself. You've got to just lighten up a little bit is what I say to myself. Just lighten up a bit, go easy on yourself. So I'm going to score myself a seven. <laughs> very good. Um, from Philip. You spend 11 to 12 hours a day thinking about the past, but then you're an archaeologist. Good. Um, okay. C is rest. So segment C now is rest. Absolutely critical one. So, well, they're all critical because it's all about balance. Balance is the key to lifestyle. Remember that. Contrary to what sometimes the media says, it's all about balance. All the evidence points to that. For a score of 10 in section C, you will need to be physically and mentally relaxing every day, making a special effort to relax. We've just done some relaxation, making a special effort to actually relax physically and mentally and have six to eight hours of good quality sleep per night. We know that lockdown affects people's sleep. There's a whole range of reasons why it affects people's sleep. So many people have come back to us to say one of the big challenges they've had since March the, whenever it was, 23rd, when the lock, first lockdown started was that sleep patterns have gone wrong. Um, so for a score of 10, physically and mentally relaxing every day and then having six to eight hours of good quality sleep per night. Score yourself a 10 if you do that. This is really my weak area. My relationship to, relationship to sleep is really poor at the moment. My sleep patterns have really gone. One, one of the difficulties is I don't sleep after I've been delivering because things are going round and round in my head. I've really got to work in it. There's lots of things I can do, but I'm going to score myself a th currently a three. One of the things that I said at the start of the um, webinar last week is that I'm not a role model in terms of well-being. I'm a fellow traveler like you, like all of us. We go through ups and downs in terms of well-being. You know, I'm just simply somebody who happens to have studied the subject and spoken to lots and lots of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people about well-being. So I can just give you some things to just remind you of some things that actually you already know. But also I've learned a lot from, from the ups and downs that I've had. And at the moment, I'm really struggling with sleep. So it's worth actually doing this session now to reflect on it. Segment E is personal development action. So for a score of 10, so we know that during lockdown, one of the things that makes a big difference is um, spending time working on personal development. So for a score of 10, you'll be continually learning new concepts. You'll be continually developing new skills and refining existing ones. And you'll, be, you'll be continually challenging and evolving your ways of thinking. So continually learning new concepts, continually learning new skills and, and adapt, refining existing ones, and then continually challenging and evolving your ways of thinking. So for me, this is a good one for me. So this is one I'm doing, I'm doing really a lot. I'm sort of enrolled in a couple of online courses and I'm actually getting better at piano, <laughs> doing regular piano practice. And I'm getting myself right up there as an eight. Okay. <laughs> Section D, there's a really interesting one. There's a little comment there from Laura about um, social activity. And does it actually exist in lockdown? So social activity for a score of 10, you'll be frequently interacting with people in a fun and relaxing way, involved with community action, and, and also carrying out regular acts of kindness. Well, actually, um, my um, social activity has increased during lockdown because of the amount of, um, the, the amount of sort of video calls that I do with friends, people that I haven't spoken to for ages, but also, you know, um, you know meeting up with people you know, depending upon the different regulations, meeting up with people and, and, and going for walks or going with going for social distance runs with them. Actually, my my social interaction has increased mostly because of the number of sort of video chats. And I know it's not quite the same, but it has increased a little bit. 
So social activity, it's gross of a 10. If you're frequently interacting with people in a fun and relaxing way, involved with community activity, carrying out regular acts of kindness. So my social activity is, is a six now. And just do it, you don't have to think about this too much, just instinctively. Okay, and the final one, there's lots of advice coming out as people are going through this, which is great because this, if you do this self-reflection really well, what it does is it triggers your commitment to act. As soon as you do it, you don't need to think about it, it just triggers your commitment to act. And the final one, F, which is act to strengthen the relationship with those people who are closest to you. So, fa so family, friend, uh, loved ones, the people that are closest to you. If you are regularly engaged in acts to strengthen those relationships, score yourself a 10. If you're not, score yourself a, score yourself a one. So this is about regularly doing things to strengthen and to, and to maintain the relationships with the people that are closest to you. So for me, not bad. Um, and uh, I'm gonna give myself a seven for that. Okay. What I want you now to do, and this is gonna be a test of your artistic skills, is to shade the bits between your, the lines that you've drawn and the center of the wheel. So I'm just gonna ask you to color it in there. You can see as I'm doing this, hopefully you can see that. I'm just coloring in the bits between the lines I've drawn and the center of the wheel. So I'm just coloring that in. Yeah. My coloring is not very good, but then I'm having to try and do it in a very strange way. Honest, I would normally color much better than this. I think my teacher would be angry with me. Stay within the lines, Stephen, she would say. There we go. So I'm coloring in the bits between the lines and the center of the wheel. And what you're doing here, what's emerging as you're coloring this in, is your new, your current lifestyle wheel. Okay. So what you're doing now is creating and what's emerging in front of your eyes is your current lifestyle wheel. <gasps> okay. So what you now need to do is to hold up your wheel in front of you and ask yourself the question, how well will that roll? <laughs> how well will that roll. If you've got a big round wheel, then that means that the journey towards achieving the things that you want to achieve and to being the sort of person that you want to be and to living and working brilliantly in a community and to being brilliant, all the things you want to be brilliant, it means that your journey is going to be elegant. If your wheel is small and crooked, it means there are some challenges. If your wheel is round, it reflects really good well-being. If your wheel is small and crooked, then there are gonna be some challenges. So have a look at that and, and just reflect maybe on what you could do. Now, sometimes during workshops, I give people um, scissors to cut out their wheel. Um, but I'm not gonna suggest that because looking at some of the comments, I'm not so sure you can be trusted with sharp objects. Um, and I can't look at that. So in any case, I'm looking at that. And as you look at it, just think to yourself, what could you do to make your wheel? What little thing, what one action, small thing. See, this is only about small things. By the cinch, it's an inch. By the yard, it's hard. What small things can you do to make your lifestyle wheel more balanced? For me, I've got to work on my sleep. Um, and, and actually, I can work on my sleep simply by going to bed earlier. And I just want you to, because it, by the time I go to bed, I'm too tired to be able to sleep properly and, I, and lots of things are going through my head. Just, just change your stru structure so you go to bed earlier. Maybe, maybe I could ask my wife just to remind me that I've got to do that because when it comes to it, I think, oh no, I'll just stay up and watch whatever it is I've got to watch. But I don't really like watching late night television, but it just feels the right thing to do. I just force myself to go to bed earlier. I just want you to think of some things that you could do to make your lifestyle wheel rounder. I'm not gonna, we're not gonna hold you to these now, but at the end of the session, at the end of today, which is gonna be in about 25 minutes time, we're gonna ask you to commit to doing some things differently. But now just think about some things that you could do. Jot some things down in the notes if you've got some ideas about the things that you could do. 
Maybe it's a change to your schedule. What we do know about lockdown is that the people that do best are those people that plan the schedules. So rather than just get up and do things, <laughs> they actually plan a schedule, a balanced schedule. Maybe, you know, I, I'm really good at planning schedules, but I just have, it just all goes to pot in the evening. So I just need to do, I know what I could do. My wife is called Lisa, who's downstairs at the moment. You know, I could ask her just to, when she goes to bed, she goes to bed at half 10 to say, to just to remind me of my commitment and to give her the responsibility to remind me because by that stage, I can't remind myself because I'm too tired. Maybe. Just think about some things that you could do. Because I will sleep if I go to bed at that time. Whereas when I go to bed later, I'm too tired. Okay, so just jot down some of the things that you could do to make your lifestyle wheel bigger and rounder, bigger and rounder. We're gonna come back to the lifestyle wheel at the end when I'm gonna ask you to make a commitment to some changes. <laughs> 